So now in this module, we will learn about applying the properties on the simple geometries. And I will start with applying the properties such as the color and line type on our AutoCAD geometries. So here we have these two drawings and actually both of them are same drawings. But in the first case, we have properties applied on some of the objects. And in this case, we have a simple drawing without any properties. So here, I'll start with the color property first. So in this case, let's look at this part of the geometry. And here you can see that for all of these line objects, the color has been assigned as yellow. Also, there are some other different colors. But here, I'll first start with applying the yellow color on this part of the geometry. Now, in order to apply the properties, there are two different ways. Either you can directly apply the property on the object or you can apply the property on the layer and you can put those objects on the layer. We will learn about layer in upcoming modules, but in this module, we will only stick with the direct application of properties on the objects. So now we need to apply the yellow color on the similar objects of this geometry. So I'll first select all of the geometries on which we need to apply the property, which is the color. So I'll select them just like this. Here we have it. Now we have made the selection. Now, after selecting the objects, go to this properties panel and from here, select this drop down, which is the color drop down. Now here you will see lots of different colors and you can select the appropriate color from this color box. Now, if this color box is not sufficient, if you want even more colors, then you can select this more colors option. Now, this will take you to index color, true color and color books tab and you can select your color using any of these methods. So obviously we can use this index color tab and we can select our required color from here. So here we have the yellow color. Let's select it. Click on OK. And the property is now applied here as you can see. So now let's have a look at the line type property of AutoCAD drawings. So here we have this drawing and here in this case, if you look closely, you'll find that these lines are quite different. Actually, they are not separate units it's a single line which looks like these broken lines now if you want to apply this kind of line type on the object here also then you need to select the appropriate line type from the properties now this is the line type which we'll use here and you can see this line type in this line type drop down so let's click on this line type drop down and here you'll see this hidden line type in your case, you will not find all of these line types in your list. In your list, you may have by block, continuous, by layer. So these will be the three line types, the by layer, by block and continuous that will be available in your list. The rest of the line types need to be loaded. And for applying the current line type here, I will also load the line type. So let's go to other and click on this load option. Now here we have a complete list of line type and you can select the appropriate line type whichever you want from this list. So I'll select this ISO dash line type. Now click on OK. And now the ISO dash line type is also added in our list. Now we'll apply this line type to our objects. Let's look at this drop down. We have the ISO dash line type here. So once the line type is added to your list, go to the objects and select them. The objects on which you want to apply the line types. So I'll carefully select these objects. Okay, so here's the selection. Now go to this drop down and select the line type here. And press escape key. Okay, so now the line type is applied, but you'll not see any difference here. And you may find this situation in your drawing also. Although, as you can see here, we have this line type, which is quite visible. But in this case, even after applying the line type, it may look something like this. So for these cases, you need to actually change the scale of these line types. And to change the scale of these line types, you need to select the lines first. So let's select the lines on which the line type has been applied. Okay. And now go to the property palette. So right click and go to properties. 
now here we have this line type scale option which is set to 1 now you need to ensure an appropriate value which can be greater than 1 or less than 1 depending upon the scale of your drawing so I'll select a smaller value for this case so let's click on this and let's change its value to 0.008 and press enter well this is very small value so let's increase its value to 0.02 press enter now that looks appropriate so I'll again increase this value to 0.05 and that's better but still we can change it to 0.04 and that looks quite perfect so I'll now close this property palette press escape key here we have this line type so now you can see the appropriate line type applied here with the correct scale so in this way you can change the scale of your line types also and depending upon the scale of this line type it will look either like this or like this so this was all about adding colors and a line type with appropriate scale to the AutoCAD drawings in the previous video I've told you about changing the color and line type of an object in AutoCAD in this video I will tell you about changing the line weight and transparency here let's look at this drawing and you'll notice that in this drawing we have this line with a different line weight the width of this line is more than the width of its counterparts here when you'll compare it you'll simply see the difference now let's look at this part of the drawing here here we have the simple drawings now in order to change the line weight of this part of the drawing you need to apply the line weight property and in this case a line weight of 0.3 has been applied now to change the line weight go to this properties panel and select this line weight drop down here you will see different line weights starting from 0.00 mm obviously that will be the default line weight and if you want to see the default line weight simply go to this line weight settings and check it so here we have the default line weight of 0.25 mm so that's the default line weight which is currently applied to all of these objects now let's click on ok let's go to this drop down and now if you want to even thicken the lines you can select the respective options or if you want to increase the thickness you can select 0.335 and all of these line weights so in this case we have a line weight of 0.30 applied on this line and we'll select the same line weight for this part so let's now select the geometries on which you need to apply the line weight so carefully select these lines now the lines are selected let's go to the drop down and select the 0.3 line weight now press escape key so here we have this line weight now in this case you can simply see the line weight here but in most of the cases the line weight will not be visible even after applying the line weight and in order to make it visible you need to ensure that this line weight status bar option is activated so in this case we have this LW display active now you may or may not find this LW display or line weight display option on the status bar and if this option is not available on the status bar then go to this customization and select this line weight so make sure that a check mark is visible along this line weight option now once the line weight display is here click on it to activate it and then you'll be able to see the line weights now let's go to the original drawing and let's look at this part here we have transparency applied to this part of the geometry now if you compare it with this part of the geometry you'll notice that this one is quite bright with 0% transparency and here a transparency of nearly 70% has been applied so that's why the object look a little bit dim than these objects now in order to apply the transparency again you need to go to the properties so in this case I'll first select the objects so here we have it these objects are selected let's select these two lines as well and let's make the selection here also so now the objects are selected let's go to this properties panel expand it and here we have the transparency option now you can increase this transparency here simply by entering the value and this value ranges from 0 to 90 so 90 is the maximum transparency that you can apply so let's type a transparency value of 70 and press tab key so here we have it now you can apply the transparency in this way or you can also move this slider 
in order to apply the transparency and in this case I'll obviously keep the transparency value to 70 so let's type 70 and press tab or enter key now let's look back in the drawing area press escape here we have it the transparency has been applied in order to see this object properly just like this one you can also change the color so you already know how to change the color so let's select all of these objects let's change its color to yellow okay now you can compare it with this object and obviously we have the transparency but here in this case also you need to ensure that this transparency status bar option is active because if you turn it off just like this even after applying the transparency the transparency will not be visible so if you don't find this transparency option here on the status bar go to the customization and make sure that this transparency is checked once this is checked you'll find this option and click on it to activate it similarly you need to ensure that line weight display should be checked and it should be on here so if you turn it off line weight will not be visible even after applying the line weight so let's go to this option and turn it on so this was all about line weight and transparency option of AutoCAD so far we have applied different properties in our AutoCAD drawing and in order to check the properties which are applied on the objects you can take help of property palette so the property palette can be accessed simply by right clicking anywhere in the drawing area and selecting the property option so obviously we don't have the property option here as none of the object is selected now in order to make the property palette active you need to select the object first so in this case i'll select the object this part of the object then right click select the properties now we have the property option so this is a simple property palette and you can obviously stretch it contract it you can change the size of this property palette also you can scroll it down here to see even more values and if you want you can even dock it to the side of this window so when I move it towards this side you'll notice that it will automatically dock here now we have the property palette always available here now this property palette is displaying the line properties of seven lines which we have selected as you can see here so we have these seven lines selected and all of these properties are related to those seven lines now let's press escape key and now we don't have any selection here so let's select any other object and in this case I'll select this object here and now this is displaying the property of this particular line similarly if you change it to let's say the circle it will only display the properties of that circle as you can see here we have the circle now so in this way you can check the properties of different objects using the property palette now you can also undock it here just move it outside this corner and here we have it now let's look at the properties which can be seen using this property palette so in the first situation we will have a look at this part of the drawing so here we have applied the yellow color so let's select these lines okay now let's look at the property palette so we can see that the color has been applied as yellow and here using this property panel we have applied the yellow color so that's the same property now if you want to change the property from here you can do that directly so let's click on this and there will be a drop down menu just like this and you can see the same drop down menu here also so when you click on it you have the same drop down menu now we have an option of more colors here select color and we have the select color window which was also available here now from here let's change this color to green click on ok and you can see the change here the green color has been applied so you can change the properties of any of these objects directly using the property palette and also using the properties panel now let's press ctrl z to get back to the original properties now we have also changed the properties of these lines so here we have this line and we have changed the line type of this line so let's select this line and now here on this line type option you'll see this acad dash line type so let's click on this drop down and now you can again change the line type if you want from this list but in this list obviously only those line types will be shown which are loaded in the drawing so if you want to load any other line type click on this other and you can load it 
Also, we have the line type scale of 0 0.04, which we have already seen. You can obviously change this value if you want according to your requirement. We also have some other properties, for example, the layer, which we will look in a moment. So you can change the layer of this line from this drop down. And there are also other options, for example, the layer panel from where you can change it. And we'll obviously look at this in the upcoming modules. Now let's look at one more option here. So let's press escape key and here we have the line width. We have applied the line width selected and now we have the line width option which is 0.3. Obviously you can change this value also. So let's change it to some other line weight and we have it here. So this line weight is now changed. You can compare it with the remaining line weights. So we not only have these many properties, we also have some additional properties here. So let's now change it once again back to 0.3 line weight. So I'll scroll it upwards, change its value to 0.3. Now we can also see some other properties related to these lines or other geometries. For example, let's zoom into this area. Now here we have a circle. Let's select it. We have all the properties now which are related to the circle. Now let's scroll it down and now let's look at the geometry panel here. Now in this geometry panel, we have some very important information here. For example, the radius, which is 57.5 for this circle the diameter, circumference and the area. So these informations can be directly accessed from the property panel. You can not only access these options, but you can also change these values. So for example, in this case, let's say that we want to change the radius of this circle from 57.5 to let's say 50. So let's type 50, press enter. And you'll notice that the radius of this circle will change in this drawing also. Similarly, if you change the value here, the new property or the new value will be updated directly here in the property panel. And also when you change the radius, the diameter and all the related values will get updated automatically. So let's press escape key and press control Z. Now, this is one way of accessing the properties of any object. There is also one more method of accessing the properties and you can do that by list command. So here also I'll select the same circle. Now let's assume that we want to find its properties. You can simply select the object, go to this properties panel, select the list option. And here we have it. Almost all of the properties which are quite important, for example, the radius, circumference and area. And you can see these properties. Obviously, you cannot change these properties from this list, but you can take a reference of these values when required. You can also match properties of one object from your drawing to the other object. For example, in this case, we have this transparency applied on this part of the geometry. Let's assume that we want to apply the transparency, the same transparency, same color and all the other properties on other part of the geometry. And in this case, we will apply it on these lines. So for that, you need to use the match properties command and the shortcut for match properties is MA. So simply type MA which is short for match attributes or match property, you can say. Now press enter. Now select the source object, which is this one, obviously. Now select the destination object and click on the destination object and the properties will get applied on those objects. Simply go on and click on those objects and the properties will be applied just like this. Press enter when you want to exit the command. In a similar way, let's say that we want to apply the same line type here, the line type which is applied here and with the same line type width and the line type scale and everything, all these properties you want to copy from here and you want to paste it on this line. For that, again, we can use MA, the match properties command. So type MA, press enter. Now click on the source object, which is this one. And now directly go to the destination object and keep on clicking and the same properties will be applied here just like this. It's quite easy and also a very handy tool if you want to apply lots of properties. So in this way, you can transfer the properties of one object to another very easily using the match property command. And that was all about the property settings of AutoCAD drawing. So in the previous video, we have seen some of the methods by which we can change the properties of objects in AutoCAD. 
and this video is about changing the properties using a simple command which is chprop so using this command you can change some of the most frequently used properties directly for any object so let's assume that we want to change the properties of this part of the geometry and for changing it we'll use the chprop command so let's type chprop press enter and now select the objects for which the properties needs to be changed so in this case I'll select all of these objects including this line and this line and now press enter now we have many options here like the color layer line type line type scale line weight and all of these options so you can select any of these options but in this case I will select the transparency because here the transparency is dim you can see that the transparency has been changed to 70 so let's change the transparency first so I'll select the transparency value and you can see the current value of transparency in this angle bracket so which is set to 70 let's change it to 0 and press enter now press enter again to apply the settings and here we have it the transparency has been restored here you can compare it with this drawing so if you want to change even other properties let's press enter to repeat the command once again select the objects and in this case I'll select only these two objects now press enter now let's change the line type so select the L type option here and enter the name of new line type so we have the current line type as bilayer so let's type its name which is hidden in this case and now press enter now press enter again to apply the settings and here we have it the new line type the hidden line type has been applied here in a similar way you can even apply different settings or you can change them so I'll press enter again to repeat the command once again I'll select these two line types press enter we have now line weight line type scale and all the other options that you can obviously change for this case I'll select the line weight which is now set to by layer let's change this value to 0 0.5 and now press enter and press enter again and the new line weight is here so this is quite an easy way of changing the properties without using the property panel obviously so even if you don't want to use the property palette or the property panel you can use this chprop option to change the properties of different objects in AutoCAD in this video I will tell you about model space viewports so here this is the model space and the drawing area also now currently we have a single drawing area in which we can obviously make any drawing but you can divide it into multiple parts and that will help you in viewing the same drawings from different perspectives now to make things clear I'll start with the view tab so go to this view tab and now here we have this model viewports panel now from this model viewports panel click on this viewport configuration and you'll see a long list of viewports so these are the different kind of viewports and that you can make here so I'll select this four equal now as the name suggests it will make these four viewports now they are simply the same viewports but they are divided into four different parts to make things more clear I'll select a new drawing so I'll go to 6.5 a and here we have the simple tree in our drawing area now once again here I'll go to the viewport configuration and I'll change it to 4 equal now you can see that in all of these viewports we have the same tree now obviously we have one special viewport here which has this blue boundary and that is the active viewport so in rest of the viewports you will see this simple cursor but in the active viewport you will see normal AutoCAD cursor now if you want to make any other viewport active simply click on that once and that will become active as shown by this blue bounding box and also these navigation tools these viewports are resizable so if you want to change the size of this viewport you can simply click on this boundary right at the center and when this double sided arrow appears move it and that will change the size of the viewport if you want to change the size in the horizontal direction select it move it like this if you want to change the total size of viewports click on this center the intersection of all of these viewport line click here and now you can 
dynamically change the size of all of these viewports like this. You can not only change the size of these viewports, but you can even make more viewports. Now to make more viewports, go to this simple plus icon. So you'll see this plus icon on the top of this boundary line between the viewports. And when double sided arrow appears, click and bring this green line. So that will be the partition line for your new viewport. Click here and we have two more viewports here. Similarly, if you want to add a viewport here, click on this plus icon and add it like this. Now we have lots of viewports in the drawing area. Let's say that we want to merge some of them. So to merge them together, select this join tool from the model viewports panel. And now click on the first viewport, click on the second one, and they are now joined together. Similarly, if you want to join both of them, select join, select the first one, and the second one and they are joined and the final viewport will take the configuration of the initial viewport so wherever you click first will become the view of our final joint viewport in this case if you want to make any viewport final and if you want to make a full screen viewport then select it so here we have it now let's say that we want to make this as the final full screen viewport i'll bring this object here in the center and now double click on this plus icon so that will make it completely full screen viewport to restore it back double click on this minus sign icon and here we have it the viewport is now restored again in order to save the configuration of these viewports you can create a named viewport so go to the named option here and go to new viewports and give this viewport a name so i'll name it as our viewport and click on ok so now this condition or this configuration of viewport is now saved in order to restore the viewports you can click on this restore and here we have it the normal default viewport and if you want to go back to the same viewport obviously you need to go to this named option and from this named viewports select our viewport click on ok and here we have it the viewport is now restored this model space viewport is especially helpful for 3D drawings where you want to view the same 3D drawing from different perspectives. So to explain that, I'll select this tab. Here we have a 3D drawing, the 3D USB plug. Now let's say that we want to view it from different angles. For that, I'll go to this corner and I'll simply double click on this viewport controls, the minus sign. And now we have the same drawing, but from different angles. So we have the front view the left view and obviously the isometric view and you can even change this view to top view or whatever view you want so if you make changes in any single viewport here the change will also appear in the rest of the viewports and that's quite a great way of editing your drawings if you want to see the results directly in other planes also so once again i'll go back to the original tab and that was all about model space viewports in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about creating views in model space of AutoCAD drawing. So right now we have this drawing and in order to see certain part of the drawing, you can simply zoom into that area and you can see that part in detail. But when you zoom out again, that view is permanently lost and there is no way by which you can directly move into that particular view but using named views you can save those views and whenever required you can recall those views so in order to save these views you need to access the view manager and for that you need to use the view command or its shortcut v so type v on the command line and press enter so this will open this view manager and here you can create your views so right now we are in the model space so the model views will be created and for that i'll click on this new now give this view a name so i'll name it as room one and now here in the boundary panel click on this box now specify the area which you want to include in your view so i'll select this area and i'll click somewhere over here and then I'll click somewhere over here. So that will be the area which will be shown in our view. And now press enter and simply click on OK. And here we have the preview of view and all the properties related to the view. And the view name can be seen here in this model views tree. Now, similarly, you can add more views to this drawing. So I'll go to new again and now give this a name. So I'll name it as kitchen 
again make sure current display selected click on the box and select the area so this is the kitchen area I'll select it completely just like this now press enter and we have the kitchen click on OK and let's add one more view so I'll click on new and this time I'll select hall and now here we have the current display let's click on this define window and this is the hall area and now press enter again and click on OK so now we have these three views included in our drawing so let's click on apply and click on OK so the views are added in the drawing and in order to access those views you can go to this option on the top left so here we have this view controls and when you click on this you'll see a long list of pre-made views and these views are especially helpful in the 3d workspace since we are in the 2d workspace we'll look into the views which we have created and those can be seen here in this custom model views so here when you click on this you'll see all the views which we have made so we have the hall kitchen and room one let's select this kitchen and the drawing will zoom into that area similarly you can click on this view change it to something else for example room one it will shift there and in this way you can add as many views as you want in your drawing you can not only add these views but you can also modify the existing views for example let's say that we want to modify this hall view so I'll go to the hall view first and now currently you can see that this part of the hall is selected let's say that we want to include this hatched area also in the hall so for that I'll select the view command so I'll type V press enter now select the hall and now here select edit boundaries and now once again create a new boundary for this view so I'll click here and I'll drag it up to this point now press enter and click on OK now let's zoom out and go to the view so I'll click on hall and here we have it now the hatched area is also included in our view so in this way you can create different views and you can access them whenever required okay so once again it's the question time and here is our question you need to make a rectangle with 7 by 3 unit as the dimension and this unit can be anything it can be inches mm or whatever unit your drawing is in and then assign hidden line type to the rectangle and a 0.5 line weight and ensure that these properties are visible in the drawing area so here we have this drawing and I'll start with the rectangle so I'll go to rectangle tool click at a point now I'll type add on the command line and then 7 comma 3 and press enter so there we have it the rectangle now we need to assign hidden line type and to assign it we need to first add it in the list so when I go to properties and I click on the drop down you'll notice that we don't have the hidden line type so we need to add it here and to add it I'll select other now click on load and select the hidden line so let's just scroll down there we have it the hidden line let's click on ok and now it's added to the list click on OK again so now it is added we can assign the property so I'll select the rectangle click on the drop down and select hidden and there we have it now the properties are also visible clearly but in case the property of this hidden line type is not visible even after applying the hidden line type in your case if it is looking like a solid line then you can select it then right click and go to properties and from this property panel you can change this line type scale value so you can either increase it or decrease it to give it a proper look so I'll close it for now now we need to change the second property which is the line weight of 0.5 so here we have the line width click on the drop down change it to 0.5 and there we have it the 0.5 line weight now here we have a problem even after applying the line weight it's still showing the line weight of original rectangle so in order to see the change line weight click on this line weight display option on the status bar and there we have it the change line weight is now visible and if this line weight display option is not visible on the status bar you can go to the customization and add this line weight from here so that's the final geometry as per our requirement 
so let's start adding hatches and gradients to our drawing and we will start with the simple hatch pattern so here we have a simple drawing and in this case we have this drawing divided into many different parts using the geometries and we will apply different patterns of hatches on different areas so i'll start with the hatch tool here on the draw panel so click on this hatch tool and that will open this hatch creation tab so this tab will remain active as long as the command is active and here we have all the options which are related to hatch so let's start with the first option which is pick points so select this pick point click on it once and the cursor will change into this point selection cursor by default also the cursor will look like this point selection cursor but if your cursor is different if it is like this the pick box type then click on this pick points to change it to this point selection cursor now let's move to the drawing area and when you'll move you'll notice that whenever the cursor finds an island the hatch pattern will be applied there so as i moved my cursor here the complete area got highlighted and the hatch will be applied here now let's move my cursor i'll move it to this area and now the hatch will be applied here so you can see that the hatch pattern will change depending upon the area where i am clicking so in this case the hatch pattern will be applied here and you can see the preview here so let's now select this area for applying our hatch okay so now our pattern is applied and the default pattern of nc31 is here obviously this is not looking like this nc31 pattern because the scale is not correct which will change but first we need to look into other patterns also so we currently see this solid angle nc31 and nc32 patterns but there are a lot more patterns available in this hatch tool so let's click on this small arrow right beside this pattern panel and it will show all the remaining patterns which are available here so you can select any of these patterns from this list and you can even create your own pattern if you want so i'll select this gravel pattern for this case and even when i change my pattern to gravel still it's looking like a solid pattern obviously we'll take care of this also so let's first move to the next option here so here on the properties panel we can change all of the properties which are related to the current hatch and the first property that we need to change is the scale obviously the scale is not correct that's why we are seeing this as a solid hatch so here we have the scale option which is set to 1 now let's change this scale value to 100 and press enter or tab key and now the hatch pattern is visible so we need to change scale to even higher value so let's change it to 200 press enter and now this looks appropriate so i'll keep this scale so now the scale has been applied let's look at the other options here so obviously we have applied the pattern you can select what we want to apply for example either solid the gradient which will learn in a moment and also the pattern obviously we have some user defined patterns also and if you have defined you can select that as well but that we are not going to select for now now here in this drop down we have an option of changing hatch color so currently by layer is selected so that simply means the color of layer will be applied to the hatch but you can select any of these colors and obviously you can go to more colors if you want to select from any of these tabs so obviously we don't need to change the color as of now and here we have the background color for our hatch so if you want to change the background color for your hatch you can select this option here so obviously in this way you can select the background color so we are not going to change that also now we have the option of hatch transparency which is set to zero so obviously in this case also you can change this transparency value from zero to 90 90 being the highest value and that will make your hatch pattern a little bit dim so you can move this transparency slider towards right and as you can see that the transparency is changing and it's making our hatch pattern more dim and you can move it here to keep the default value also we have an angle here which is set to zero so you can change this value and this angle will rotate the pattern the current pattern of your hatch so you can change that value for example let's enter 45 press enter and you can see there is a rotation in the pattern of these hatches although it won't be apparent or very much visible in this gravel pattern it will be very much visible with other straight line pattern so that also will look for now i'll change this value back to zero 
Okay, so now we have changed these properties. Let's expand this properties panel and look at one more option here. Now here we have an layer assignment. So currently you can see that the hatch pattern is assigned to this line layer. So if you want to assign it to any other layer, you can select it from here. For example, I'll select this hatch layer, which is already made for these hatches. So now only these hatch patterns will be assigned on that hatch layer. And obviously we'll learn about layer in the next module. So once these settings are done, simply click on close hatch creation. And here we have our final hatch. Now that's not the only way of making hatches and there are also other ways of making it. So I'll simply select this hatch pattern and I'll delete it. Now let's go to this hatch tool again. And once again, we'll select some areas. So first I'll select this area and then I'll select this area, this one and this one. So in all of these areas, we need to change the pattern. So obviously this gravel pattern is not required here. So I'll click on this arrow to expand this list of hatches and I'll select the NC31 pattern. So that's the pattern which is applied here. Now, if you want to add more areas, you can obviously select it by simply selecting the island here, or you can also select this option, the select option, and that will allow you to select the boundaries. So now you'll see that your cursor changed into a pick box and you can simply click on the boundaries now and that area will be selected for your hatch. You can simply repeat the process for this side as well. And here it is. So these are two different ways of selecting hatches, either with a pick point or with the pick box. Obviously, if you need to remove some of the boundaries, you can select this remove option, click on the boundaries to remove the hatch patterns. So here we have it. So now we'll apply this hatch pattern and we'll change the angle also. So in this case, you can see that the angle is 45 degrees, but that will be the default angle of hatch. Now let's move on to this angle option, which is set to zero. So now you can change this angle. And when you'll change this angle, so let's now change it to 45 and press enter. You'll notice that the lines will become completely vertical. So in this case, the angle measurement will start from the current angle of your hatch. Initially, the hatch was inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So changing it angle to 45 degree will add 45 degrees more. So that will become a 90 degree angle with respect to the positive side of X axis. That's why we have this vertical angle here. So I'll change it back to zero. And we have many other options here, like the origin associative hatch and say there are some other options in this options panel. So that will look in upcoming videos. For now, I'll simply uncheck this associative option and I'll not change any of these properties and simply I'll select this close hatch creation. And here we have it. The hatches are now applied. So in this way, you can create simple hatches in AutoCAD. Okay, so now let's have a look at some of the other options of hatches like set origin and associative hatches. So here we have these two simple rectangles and both of them are of same dimensions. Now let's move on to this hatch tool and I'll select this NC31 pattern. I'll keep this pick points active and now click on this area. So in this case, I have selected this area of the rectangle and here make sure this associative option is checked. Now I'll simply close this hatch. Now we'll create a new hatch pattern here, but this time we'll make it non associative. So once again, I'll go to this hatch tool, same settings in this case also, but simply uncheck this associative option. So now click on this area and close hatch creation. So you'll find no visible difference in between these two hatch patterns, although one of them is associative and the second one is not associative. So let's select this hatch pattern. And in this case, you'll see this simple grip. Now, in this case, we have the grip at the center, but we also have the boundary grips. Now that's not the only difference. In this case, let's select the boundary or the rectangle and let's move it and the hatch pattern changed itself. Now let's do the same thing here. I'll select this and I'll move the boundary, but now 
the hatch did not move it's still at its initial position so that's the actual difference between an associative and a not associative or non associative hatch in this case you have additional boundaries along with the hatch so now here we have the boundaries and you can use these boundaries to move the hatch pattern like this now let's press ctrl z to get back to the original rectangles and now we'll learn about the origin option so let's select this hatch pattern and this time i'll select a different pattern let's select this arp816 pattern and now click in this area now the hatch pattern scale is quite big and we need to change it we need to actually decrease its value in order to see it clearly so i'll go to this scale and i'll change its value to 0.1 and press enter okay so that's the hatch pattern here now look at the hatch pattern which is applied here now in this case the pattern started from any random point and it's now following the rest of the geometry but we don't have control over the full block size now let's say that we want a full block on this corner we want the complete block to start from this side and we want the rest of the block to follow that pattern now for that case you can specify an origin point and to do that select this set origin option and click at a point where you want to specify the origin in this case it will be this point now click here and you'll notice a change here now this side we have this complete block and rest of the blocks will follow this origin similarly if you want to change the origin you can select it here as well or any other point i'll go to set origin again and i'll click at this point now the origin changed to this point so that's the set origin tool you can use this tool on other patterns also for example i'll select the same hash tool i'll select the nc31 pattern and i'll change the scale to one and let's apply the hatch here now if you zoom into this area you'll notice that the hatches are not starting from this vertex now what if you want the hatch to start from this vertex obviously you can change the origin so go to set origin click on the vertex and the hatch the first hatch will start from this vertex and rest of the hatches will follow the pattern so in this way you can precisely change the pattern of hatches and you can specify the origins and it will be very helpful in many cases for example if you want to make a tiled pattern somewhere on the wall then this can be really helpful in deciding the side where you want the full tile to remain visible so let's now click on this close hatch creation and that was all about the set origin and associative option of hatches now let's have a look at some of the advanced features of the hatch tool now here we have a fairly complicated geometry and in this case we have multiple areas which are again inside any other area for example the first rectangle then the second one circle rectangle so one area is within the next and there is another area within the next now let's go to the hatch tool and i'll select this nc31 pattern for the sake of simplicity and i'll start applying the hatches so in the first case when you select any area the island will be detected or the immediate boundaries from the point where you click will be detected so in this case the outer boundary will be the circle and the inner boundary will be this rectangle now whatever the area falls in between these two extreme boundaries will be hatched so that's the simple island detection now if you want the hatch tool to ignore this kind of island detection you can change its options so go to this options panel and expand it and from here you can find this island detection tool so click on this drop down and select ignore island detection now move back to the same area and this time we don't have any inner island detection simply the rectangle is ignored and if you click inside the rectangle obviously there is no other island and it will completely hatch it but if you select this area once again all the internal geometries will be ignored there will be no island detection obviously the outer island will still be recognized so in this way you can change this option and it is really helpful if you have plenty of objects inside any outer boundary that you want to include in your hatch now let's go to this options and from here 
once again select this normal island detection and we once again have this island detection now let's select the hatch tool once again and I'll try to apply the hatch in this area so when I move my cursor here the hatch will be easily applied if I select this area the hatch will again be applied but when I move my cursor to this area the hatch will not be applied and there is a very simple reason for that here we have a small gap so currently the closed boundaries are not found and that's why the hatches are not applied but if you try to apply the hatch in this area there will be a warning message and this simply states that a closed boundary is not determined but that simply does not mean that you cannot apply any hatch pattern in this area you can still apply the hatches in this area using the gap tolerance so i'll close this hatch creation and i'll remove both of these hatches and now i'll once again select this hatch pattern now i'll click in this area and obviously you'll find this error message now we need to change some values in, in order to apply the hatch here now go to this options panel expand it and here you'll see this gap tolerance option so you need to increase a gap tolerance and the gap tolerance value should be approximately larger than the value of gap here so whatever the gap is here the value of gap tolerance should be greater than that so i'll simply type di to find out the gap here and the gap here is 4.70 units so let's add a value of 5 in gap tolerance so select the hatch pattern expand this panel and add a gap tolerance of 5 and press enter now let's go to this area again and click here and now we have this message box which is different from the message box which we saw earlier and here we have this continue hatching this area option so select it and the hatch will be applied here and that's only because of gap tolerance now click on close hatch creation and here we have it the hatch is applied even when there is an open area so now let's erase it and let's look at other options so once again i'll select the hatch pattern and now i'll select multiple areas to create our hatches so i'll select these three areas and now i'll close the hatch creation now in this case when you click on any of these hatches you'll find that all of these hatches are selected because i've selected all of these areas in a single run to make this hatch and that's why they are treated as a single unit now you can make them as separate hatches by making the hatches one by one so you can make this hatch then exit the command then make this hatch pattern and exit the command and repeat the process for the last one or you can also select a different approach so i'll first erase this hatch pattern and now once again i'll go to the hatch tool select the first area the second one and the third area now here expand this options and here we have a create separate hatches option so click on this create separate hatches so that will ensure that these hatches will be treated as separate entities and now click on close hatch creation now select any of these and they are completely separate from one another there is also a draw order for hatches so i'll erase this complete hatch pattern and now once again i'll select the hatch and I'll select any area so let's select this area first now in this case we have a boundary and also we have an hatch we don't know whether the hatch is overlapping the boundary or it's other way around so in order to check that again expand the options panel and here you will find the option so currently the hatches are behind the boundary as you can see here it's sent behind the boundary option which is now selected so let's keep that option active the hatches are behind the boundary and close the hatch creation let's go to the hatch again and this time change the option and let's change it to bring in front of the boundary and apply the hatch here and close it okay so in this case the hatch is above the boundary here behind the boundary let's see the difference let's move on to the boundaries here and in this case you will be able to select the boundaries because the hatches are behind the boundary now in this case when you move to the boundary the hatch will be selected and that's quite evident because the hatch is overlapping the boundary so that's the subtle difference between these two hatch patterns you can also change the draw order of hatches and to make it clear i'll once again create a new hatch pattern so select this hatch click on this area to apply the hatch pattern and i'll change the color of this hatch to red 
and now here we have this options let's click on this drop down and here we have many options here like the send to back and bring to front so let's select this send to back option and now click on close hatch creation now the current hatch pattern has been sent to back but it's obviously not making any difference so in order to see the difference let's bring the hidden text i have already created a text here so i'll just bring it in the drawing area using this end object isolation and now you can see clearly that the hatch is behind this text now what if you want to bring this hatch above the text for that you can modify this hatch select the hatch once again go to the options and from here bring it to front so let's select this bring to front and close the hatch and now you can see that this hatch is clearly overlapping the text so that's the difference between the different draw orders so in the previous case it was behind the text and now it's above the text so you can select any of these options so that was all about some of the advanced features of hatch so let's have a look at the boundary and wipeout tools so I'll start with the boundary tool and here we have the simple drawing now in this case let's say that we want to find the area of this region so obviously we can use the area tool and that's an efficient way but still we have an alternate way of doing that and that's by creating the boundary so here on the draw panel when you expand this hatch flyout you'll see this boundary option selected and now you'll see this boundary creation option now we have a pick point here and also we have the object type so here in the object type select polyline and now select this pick point and click at this point now when you click at this point you'll notice that this complete area will be highlighted so that's the boundary which will be created now press enter and we have a boundary now click on this boundary and the boundary is highlighted it's now selected and you can find the area of this complete polyline to find the area of this region and you can simply do that by going to the property palette so right click go to the properties and scroll it down and here we have the area which is 3662.305 square units and also the perimeter or the length of this complete boundary so that's quite an easy way of finding the area and there are also many other applications of this boundary tool also you can use this geometry separately so you can click on this boundary move it elsewhere and you can use it similarly you can create a boundary with a region tool so in this case the boundary has been created with polyline as you can see on the tooltip now i'll select the same boundary tool and this time I'll change the object type to region now click on the pick point and this time I'll select this pick point press enter now we have a region boundary and obviously you can move it using this grip and here also you can find the area using the property palette so we have the area and perimeter and also the boundary so you can use any of these methods so let's now erase both of these boundaries in AutoCAD, the hatch patterns have a unique property of avoiding any object which is already present in the island. For example, here we have this text. Now I'll apply hatch pattern on this island or in this area. For that, I'll select the hatch tool and select this NC31 pattern and click on this area. Now, when you click on this area, you'll notice that the hatch will completely ignore the area which is covering this text. In that way, the text will remain legible against the background now click on this close hatch creation and here we have the hatch now what if you decide to make this text after creating the hatch in that case the hatch will completely overlap the text and for those cases you can use the wipeout tool so let's create a hatch here and then we'll copy this text here so go to the hatch tool and click on this area and let's change the color of this hatch to green in order to clearly separate both of these hatches and click on close hatch creation now we'll copy this text on this area or on this hatch so select the copy tool click on the text press enter move it on this area now we don't have any clear boundaries here and obviously the text is not very clearly visible against the hatch background so there are a couple of ways to make it very clear and in order to remove these hatches 
along the boundary of this text you can use the wipeout feature so before using the wipeout feature i'll make a rectangle so go to the rectangle and create a rectangular boundary around this text so this text boundary will be used for clearing up the hatches now select the wipeout tool so expand the draw panel and select the wipeout tool from here now we have an option here which is polyline select this polyline and select the polyline here and here we have an option of erasing the polyline so whether we want to erase the polyline or not you can select it here i'll select yes we want to erase the polyline so now the hatch patterns are clear but we still have a problem the text is not visible and in order to bring this text in the front of hatch and in order to make it visible you we need to change its draw order so select the text when you move your cursor you'll see that the text will be highlighted and you can select it now type draw order and press enter now we need to move it to the front so simply select this front option and here we have it the text is now visible now there are also other ways of clearing the area so i'll select this rectangle and i'll erase it and simply by erasing the rectangle we can again bring back the hatches now i'll go to this wipeout tool once again and now i'll create a frame around this text so you can simply click on different points to create the frame you don't need to necessarily have a frame or a polyline and here we have it now simply press enter and here we have the wipeout region and in this case also in order to bring it to the front you need to select the text and change its draw order so select the draw order click on front here we have the text now the frame is visible in these cases now if you want to hide these frames also from the drawing area you can use wipe out frame system variable so type wipe out frame press enter and now change its value to zero and we don't have any frame boundary here so in this way you can change the values of the system variable to make this wipeout frame even more visible so that was all about wipeout and boundary tools in this video i will tell you about creating gradients which are different patterns of colors in our autocad drawing so for creating the gradients go to the draw panel and expand the flyout and select the gradient tool now you'll see a very familiar hatch creation tab but we have some simple difference here in the pattern we have these gradients the color gradients and also we have a new centered option here now we can select the pattern of colors which we want to apply from this list so let's select this gradient linear now go to any area and obviously it will detect the island as it did in the previous case of hatch creation and it will apply the gradient there we have gradient of yellow to blue transition and that's selected here the gradient linear pattern now if you want to change the colors of this gradient you can select this menu and you can change the colors from here so i'll select red as the first color and for the second color let's change it to the cyan now we have this transition here if you want to apply the gradient in more than one area then you can also select multiple islands here and to exit this simply click on close hatch creation now let's go to the gradient tool again and this time i'll select this circular area now in this semicircular area we have this linear gradient but i'll change it to this centered now i'll select this area also and you'll see that in this case the complete circle will be taken as the hatch boundary now the gradient is applied here and also we have a centrally aligned highlighted area if you want to change that if you want to change the highlighted area you can simply uncheck the centered option and that will make this highlighted area off centric just like this now in this case if you want the hatch to apply on this complete circle then make sure that this create separate hatches is unchecked so currently the create separate hatches is checked so click on this to uncheck it and now both of these hatches will be treated as a single region click on close hatch creation and we have a single hatch here just like this although we had a boundary here so that's very much similar to the hatch creation but instead of making hatch pattern we have the colored gradients now if you want to apply a solid color then select the gradient or you can also select the hatch tool and select the solid pattern from this list so select the solid 
select the color which you want to apply for example in this case let's select this color and select the area where you want to apply it and click on close hatch creation and there we have it the solid color applied to the island so that was all about the gradient tool of AutoCAD so here is our question related to the module we need to create an associative hatch in a rectangle of length 10 and width 5 unit with these properties the pattern should be NC 31 the origin of that pattern should be lower left vertex of the rectangle and the scale should be any scale which is clearly visible and the scale in which the lines of the hatch pattern are clearly visible so here we have the drawing let's start with the rectangle tool so i'll click on rectangle and click at a point now i'll type at and a length of 10 and a width of 5 unit and press enter so there we have it now we need to add the pattern here so for that i'll go to this hatch tool and make sure this nc31 is selected also we need to ensure that this associative option is checked so with these two options click inside this area and here we have it the hatch is quite clearly visible but if it is not visible in your case you can go to this scale and change it in this case i'll change it to 2 and press enter there we have it now it's widely spaced and now we need to change only one property here we need to change the origin so in this case the origin should be lower left which is this point so let's zoom into this area so here you can clearly see that the origin is not clearly specified and the line is starting from somewhere on this horizontal line. So we need to ensure that this line should start from this vertex. For that, I'll click on set origin and click on this vertex. There we have it. Now it's starting from the required point. Now let's zoom out and there we have it. The final hatch pattern. So let's now click on close hatch creation and there we have it. The drawing as per the requirement. So now let's start with the layers. So layers are simply the categories in which you can put your objects. For example, here we have this drawing with simple line, polyline, text, dimensioning, hatches and many other things. Now let's say that we want to put different type of objects in different categories. Then for that condition, layers can be used. So using layers, you can put all of the dimensions on a separate layer. Similarly, you can put all of the text geometries and hatches on different layers so that will help you in managing the drawing more efficiently so right now we have all of our drawings on a single layer which is layer 0 and that can be seen here so we have this layer 0 and which is available in the drop down now click on this drop down and you'll see that we have this single layer which is 0 and also this def point layer which is automatically created whenever a dimension is added so we'll learn about this def point layer later on now in order to add any layer you need to go to the layer properties manager so click on this layer properties manager and this palette will appear now you can expand this palette just like any other palette and you can change its size here you'll see lots of different options which are related to this layer properties manager if these options are not clearly visible simply right click on any one of them and select maximize all columns so that will make all of these options visible so right now we are not interested in these options rather we are interested in adding more layers so currently we have this zero layer and you can see this checkbox along the zero layer that indicates that this layer is active and all of the drawings which are made currently in this drawing area will be put on this zero layer now we also have a new layer which is def point and this is automatically added in order to add a new layer you need to click on this new layer icon now click on it and now give this layer a name so by default it will be named as layer 1 layer 2 and so on so i'll name it as dimensions so i'll type dim for dimensions and click anywhere in this palette and now click on this icon once again and this time i'll add hatch as layer name click again and now click on it once again and add a new layer text and click anywhere else 
and that's sufficient for now but i'll create one more layer so let's click on this again and i'll leave its name as layer one now in this way we can add as many layers as we want in this list there is no limit to that and if you want to delete any of these layers you can simply select that and click on this delete layer and that layer will be deleted there are certain restrictions and you cannot delete some of the layers and to know that i'll select this layer zero and i'll click on this delete now this warning message will appear and that will tell you about the layers which cannot be deleted so in this case layer 0 and def points cannot be deleted and we were trying to delete layer 0 that's why it was not deleted we also cannot delete the current layer so currently active layer is layer 0 obviously if some other layer would have been active and if you try to delete that that will also not be deleted also if you have layers containing object that won't be deleted and also xref dependent layers we'll learn about xrefs also later on in upcoming modules so these are the layers that cannot be deleted so let's close it and let's now assign different objects from this drawing to these layers so currently we have the zero layer active and with that i'll close it now let's say that we want to first assign all of the dimensions on dim layer for that select any one of the dimension and then right click and select this option select similar so that will select all of the dimensions which are present in this drawing now go to this drop down and select the dim layer and all of these objects are now present on dim layer so let's press escape key and if you want to check that simply click on any of these dimensions and when you click that you'll notice that here we have this dim layer visible and if you uncheck if you press escape key you'll see the zero layer which is currently active now in a similar way we will assign hatch layer so i'll select this hatch pattern and i'll go to the home tab and i'll assign it to the hatch layer also we have one more hatch pattern here so let's select it also and let's again change this to hatch okay now we have some text here so let's select the text then right click select this option select similar so that will select all of the text in this drawing and once again go to the drop down select text so now we have assigned some of the objects on different layers so that was the introduction of layer in the next video i will tell you about changing properties of these layers so let's have a look at the layer properties manager palette so when you click on this layer properties icon this layer properties manager palette will open up now this is just like any other palette in autocad you can resize it you can dock it you can hide it and if you move it to this side it will dock it automatically in order to release it simply click on this and bring it outside now this layer properties manager has a list of all the layers and its related properties the layer which is currently active will be shown with this green check mark and you can change the status of currently active layer by selecting any other layer and clicking on this icon so that will set current that layer so in this case we have this dim layer which is now active and which is now set as the current layer so by simply setting any layer as the current layer you are essentially telling AutoCAD to make any new geometries on that layer so in this case i have set dim layer as the current layer so i'll now hide this palette and now i'll make a new drawing and this drawing will be made on dim layer so when you click on this object you'll notice that we have this dim here that indicates that the current layer for this object is dim even when you uncheck it you'll notice that dim layer is active but if you select any other object for example this object the layer changes to zero which was the active layer for this object similarly if you select this text it will change to the respective layer which is text so in order to make any of these layers active you can activate that layer from this layer properties manager simply by selecting that layer and clicking on this set current option or you can also make it active layer from this drop down menu so click on this drop down and change it to something else for example this layer zero now we have zero layer as active layer now i'll make a new geometry and it will be made on layer zero when you click on it layer zero will be shown here so let's now erase both of these geometries and let's expand this layer properties manager 
So you can change multiple properties of a layer. We'll start with the color. In this case, here we have this color column and all of these layers have a single color which is white and that's the color which we see here. Now let's say that we want to change colors of some of these layers. I'll start with the dim layer. So we have this dim layer. Let's select this color box and this will open this select color window. Now from this window you can select any of these colors and if this window is not sufficient you can select the colors from this true color that will give you more options to select the color or you can use color books. For this case I'll select index colors and I'll select this green color and now click on OK. So the layer has been assigned green color and all the objects on this dim layer are now taking that property so you can directly see it in the drawing area also we have all of these dimensions now colored in green let's move to the hatch layer and we'll change its color to cyan and click ok similarly we can change the color for text layer you can change it to red if you want or any other color and we have this C line layer also let's select it and let's change it color to magenta and click on OK. So in this way you can apply different colors to different layers and that will help you in identifying these different objects in the drawing area. Now we have some properties here like on off, freeze, thaw and lock unlock. Now we'll have a look at that but before that I'll simply move this palette over here and I'll move this drawing area just towards right. Let's decrease the size of this palette also. Now we have this complete drawing in view. So we have this on and off option and using this on off option you can hide some of the objects from your drawing area. For example, here we have this dimension layer. Now if you click on this light bulb icon, it will turn off this current layer and all of the objects in that layer will hide from your drawing area. To bring it back, simply click on this bulb icon again and it's back in the drawing area. Similarly, you can freeze any of these layers. So here we have an option of freezing the layers. So when you click on this freeze icon, it will freeze it and you can click on it again to thaw it or bring it back. So visibly on and off and freeze thaw have same effect on the drawings. But when you freeze your drawing, not only the objects become invisible from the drawing area, but they also become invisible from the background processing of your PC. So when you freeze any of these layers, the objects on that layer will not be counted for regeneration. So AutoCAD will regenerate or refresh your drawings without considering those objects. So that will improve the performance of your software visibly and this is especially helpful for large drawings. So in large drawings, you can freeze the layers which are not required to improve the performance of your drawing and of your software as a whole. So for small drawings on and off and freeze thaw will have no visible effect apart from hiding the objects. Now let's have a look at this lock and unlock. So using this lock layer you can simply lock the objects and it will become uneditable so you won't be able to modify objects on that layer. Also when you lock any of the layers the objects on that layer will dim in color and you can see that the transparency has been increased here. Now we have the 50% transparency and this small lock icon will also appear along the cursor. The transparency of this locked layer can be controlled by this transparency slider. So you can bring this slider here to restore the complete transparency or you can move it here if you want to increase the transparency just like this. So I'll change its transparency back to 50% and I'll also unlock this layer. So we not only have these many options, we also have lots of other options in this palette. So let's expand this palette. And now we have this line type. So obviously you can change the line type also, but for line type, I'll select this C line layer. Now in this C line layer, we have this continuous line type. Let's click here and let's select this center line type instead. Now if not many line types are loaded here in the drawing. You can simply click on this load and you can load more line types like ISO dash and you can use it. So let's use this center line type for this case and I'll click on OK. And when you look into the drawing area, you'll notice that the line type of the object on that layer will change. Similarly, you can change the line weight. So I'll change the line weight to 0.3. Click on OK. And here we have a visible result.
and obviously you can change the transparency so the value of transparency will range from 0 to 90 and you can change it to any value which you want so I'll select 70 and click on OK and here we have it the transparency has been reduced in case of line weight and transparency you need to ensure that this line weight display and this transparency display status bar options are active in order to see its effect so if you turn off this line width display, obviously the line width will not be visible. Similarly, if you turn off this transparency option, the transparency will not be visible. So make sure that these options are active. There is also an option of this plot. Now, when you turn off the plot for any of these layers, the objects will not be plotted. For example, I'll turn off the plot for this dim layer, which contains this green object or the dimensions. So let's zoom out and let's decrease the size of this palette. Now all of these dimensions will not appear when you plot your drawing whether you print it on a paper or you take the output on a PDF file it will not appear. To make it visible you need to ensure that the plot is on. The def points layer will always have this plot turned off by default and you cannot change this value. So let's decrease the size of this palette and that was all about the layer properties manager palette. In this video, I will tell you about Layer States Manager and Layer Walk Tools. So let's start with the Layer States Manager. So in this case, we have this drawing and most of the objects in this drawing are assigned on different layers. For example, the dim layer for the dimensions and the text layer for the text. Also, hatch layer for these hatches. We also have a C line or the construction line layer for these construction lines. Now there may be situations when we want different states of layer in which the behavior of layer are quite different and we may need to preserve that state. To make this clear, I'll make a couple of layer states. So expand this layers panel and click on this push pin. So that will keep this layers panel always open. Now here we have this layer states manager drop down. Now click on this drop down and you'll see this new layer state and also the manage layer states option. So select this new layer state first and give it a name. So I'll name it as all active. So that's simply the name of current state of layer. I'll click on OK. And now this state of layer is saved in which all the layers are on. All the layers are not frozen. They are unlocked and they have these conditions of these colors and all the other settings. So that's simply a layer state which is now saved as all active. Now let's make some changes in this state. So I'll click on this and drop down and I'll turn off some of the layers. So I'll turn off the dim layer and I'll also turn off this hatch layer. Now we have dim and hatch off and let's save it as a new state. So I'll click on this and drop down and I'll click on new layer state. So let's type dim dash hatch off. Okay, so these two are off. Now click on okay. So we have this second layer state. Now let's go to this drop down and once again change the layer state. So I'll turn both of these on and this time I'll simply lock the dim layer and I'll also lock the construction line layer. Now let's save this state. So go to this layer states, new layer state and let's type lock as the name. So that's all. Now click on OK. So we have these three layer states which are saved here. All active, dim hatch and lock. And when I move my cursor over these layer states, you will be able to see a preview of what the condition of layers were when they were saved in these states. So in all active, all of the layers are active. And if you want to see this layer state, simply click on it and all of the layers will become active. Now, if you want to see the second layer state in which dim and hatch layers were off, simply select it. And now we have dim and hatch layer off. So simply you can toggle between different layer states using this layer states drop down. If you want to manage more about these layer states, click on this manage layer states and now we have more options. For example, if you want to change the name of any of these layer states, simply select that and click on rename. So I'll rename it as dim lock and click anywhere to change the name. So this has been changed. Now, if you want to export this, you can also export it and you can also import them. 
the layer states file are saved with LAS extension. So you can obviously use them. So let's now close this and let's get back to the all active layer state. Now we also have another tool which is LaveWalk, which is helpful in managing a long list of layers. So the LaveWalk tool can be found here. So here we have this LaveWalk. You can also use its command equivalent LaveWalk. So let's select this LaveWalk tool. But before selecting that, I'll just move my drawing towards left and now click on this LaveWalk. So this will open this layer walk window. Now in this window, you'll notice that all of these layers are present and they are all active as you can see here with the blue selection, but now only the text layer has been active. So using this lay walk, you can make a selection of the layer. So I'll make all of them active first. And now all of these layers are visible. Now let's say that you want to see a couple of layers for that. You can selectively click on those layers. For example, we want to see only the dim layer. So click on the dim and only the objects which are on dim layer will be visible and rest of them will become invisible. Similarly, you can click on any other layer and only the object of that layer will be visible. If you want to select multiple layers, you can press and hold control key and click on multiple objects and the objects of that layer will be visible. In a large drawing, it becomes very difficult to find out the exact layer of an object. So for those cases, you can also select this option. So at first, let's select all of these objects. So all of these layers, now they're active. Now let's select this pick box and now select the objects. So we have selected the dimension and let's select the C line object and now press enter. So now only these two objects will remain visible and you'll be easily able to identify the layers which are currently active using this lay walk. Now, if you don't want to keep this state, then you can select this restore on exit and close it. And then all the layers will return back to their original condition. But if you want to keep that state, then select the lay walk and select the layers here. And now uncheck this restore on exit option. And now this condition or this state will be retained. So let's click on continue when this warning message appears. And here we have it. The condition has been retained here. So let's once again turn on all of these inactive layers. And let's click on this push pin to release the layers panel. And that was all about layer states and layer walk tool of AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about layer filters and layer filters are very important tools for large drawings. So when the drawing generally becomes very large, it starts to accumulate lots of layers and the layers can even range to hundreds or thousands of layers. So managing that many layers becomes a very difficult task. And with the help of layer filters, you can really make that task easy. So in order to use layer filters, click on this layer properties to bring this layer properties manager. And now here we have lots of layers in this drawing, as you can see here, although the number of layer is not in hundreds, but still we have a fairly large number of layer. Now in this case, let's say that we want to classify these layers depending upon their characteristics or depending upon their properties. For example, the color, the name, and also the states like on, off, freeze, lock, and also the plot. So these conditions can be used to create different filters and we can then select the objects based upon their filters. So in the first situation, let's create a layer filter, which contains all the red layers. So for that, I'll click on this new property filter icon. And this layer filter properties window will pop up. Now let's name it. So I'll name it as red filter. And now we are selecting the color filter. Red is a color. So I'll simply go to this color column. So now click on this color column and you'll see this box. Now click on this box and select the color which you want to include in your filter and click on OK. Now the color has been included and we have all the layers with a red color. Now they are sorted out. Let's click on OK. And here we have a new red filter. If you want to go to the complete list of layers, simply click on this all used layers and we have the complete list.
now let's change the states of these layers let's turn off some of these layers and i'll also ensure that the layers which are off among those some of them should have their plot turned off so i'll turn it off i'll turn off plot for many more layers now once again let's go to this layer filter and let's name it as off no plot and we want to create a filter with all the layers which are off and also with all the layers for which plotting is turned off so i'll first go to this on and off option and now i'll select this off so now we have all the layers now we also need to select the second condition which is plot so go to plot and select no plot so now we have these many layers which fulfill both the criteria. so all these layers are off and also the plot for these layers is off and click on ok so we have this second filter in a similar way you can use as many criteria as possible to create different kind of layer property filters you can not only create the layer property filter based upon their simple properties but you can also create them using their names so i'll click on this all unused layers and now let's have a look at the names of these layers so the name of these layers are quite random let's say that we want to make a layer property filter that start with c for that i'll again click on this property filter and i'll give it a name so i'll type c as the name and now click on this name field and now simply type c so that will make a filter containing all the layers which start with c letter and let's click on ok so that's quite easy but what if we want to create a filter which contains a set of alphabets somewhere in between the complete layer name for example we want all the layers in which the third letter is n for that i'll once again go to the property filter and i'll name it as n and now click on the name and now you need to specify this property using wildcards so we want third place to be occupied with n and all the remaining spaces can be occupied by any other letter so for that i'll select this question mark so that will indicate that the first letter could be anything the second letter could be anything but the third letter should be n and now the star or this asterisk mark after n indicates that rest of the letters could be anything so in this case you can simply see that the third letter is n in all of these layers and we have our new layer property filter so in this way using different kind of wild cards you can make a classification of different layers depending upon their properties and you can not only create this layer property filter you can even directly use it here in the layer search now for example if you want to search for any layer in which third letter is b simply type question mark question mark b and here we have it the layer with third letter as b will be visible with all of its properties so in this way you can use this layer search as well so that's the layer property filter we also have a group filter and using the group filter you can add the layers manually that may or may not have any properties in common so for creating the group filter click on this new group filter icon and give it a name so i'll name it as new group let's press enter now once again i'll double click on all unused layers and now you simply need to drag and drop all the layers which you want to add in this filter so i'll select this am0 add it in this new group and i'll randomly select some of the layers and i'll add it in this new group okay now double click on this and we have all the layers which we have added and these may or may not have some properties in common because we have manually added them here now there is also an option of inverting the filter for example let's just select this red filter and obviously in this red filter you'll find all the layers containing red as its color now if you want to invert the filter simply click on this invert filter icon and you'll have a list with all the layers except the layers containing red color in a similar way you can invert the filter for all of these properties for example for n c or all of these other filters so that was all about creating layer property and group filters in autocad 
In this video, I will tell you about lay merge, lay del, and copy to layer commands of AutoCAD. So I'll start with the lay merge command and using lay merge command, you can merge two or more layers into a single layer. And that will also move all of the objects of the source layer on the destination layer. So to make it clear, I'll start the lay merge tool. So expand the layers panel and select this icon so that is the lay merge icon you can also use its command equivalent layMRG so let's click on it and now click on the source object the object which you want to move so in this case I'll select this letter and that will select all of the objects which are on this particular layer and now press enter now click on any object of the destination layer so I'll select this object the purple one and click on it and now you'll notice that the color of this object changes and all the remaining properties of this object will also change and it will inherit the property from this target layer. So if you want to commit to these changes simply select yes from the command line and we don't have red layer anymore. So you can click on this drop down and you'll notice that we don't have that red layer which was named as text and all the objects of that layer are moved to this new C line layer. To undo the change, simply press Ctrl Z and we have this here, the text layer, which is here. Now let's look at the lay del command. So using the lay del command, you can simply delete some of the layers and also its objects. So it's not always recommended to use this lay del command but if required, you can use this command to forcefully delete the layers containing objects. So if you open this layer properties manager and if you try to delete any of the layer that contains object, for example, here we have this text layer. And as you know that the text layer has some objects. So let's decrease the size of this layer properties manager and I'll move it here. Now we have this text layer and all of these red objects are on this text layer. Now if you try to delete it using this layer properties manager, you won't be able to do that because the layer contains object. That's this third criteria. Now if you want to forcefully delete it, then simply go to this layers panel, expand it, select this lay del tool and now select any one of the object on that layer. And here we have it. All the objects from that layer are gone and also the layer will be purged. So if you want to commit to this change, simply press enter and select yes from the command line. And let's go to this drop down and we don't have that text layer. And also all the objects from here are gone. As I told you that there are some layers which are quite stubborn, for example, def points that cannot be deleted. But using this lay del tool, you can also delete this def point layer. Although it is not recommended, this is quite an important layer which is automatically created and it stores all the definition points of the dimensions. So I recommend you not to delete these layers, but still if you want to delete some of the layers which are quite stubborn and you don't want them, then you can use lay del command. So I'll once again press Ctrl Z to bring that layer back. Now let's have a look at copy to layer tool. So if you want to copy any one of the object from one layer to different layer, then you can use this copy to layer tool. So for that, I'll expand this layers panel and select this copy to layer. Now click on the object that you want to copy. In this case, I'll select both of these arrows. So I'll select this arrow and I'll also select this arrow we want to copy this arrow and now press enter now specify the destination layer or the layer on which you want to put these arrows so i'll select this c line layer object now it will prompt you to specify the base point so you can specify the base point and move these objects somewhere else and if you want to place it directly overlapping the first object you can simply press enter and we will have overlapping objects. So in this case, you may not find that overlapping object, but when you'll move your cursor, you will see this menu, which indicates that we now have two objects. So you can select the original one and you can erase it. Now you can see that we have an overlapping object. Let's select this one also and I'll erase it here. Similarly, I'll repeat the process from this side. So I'll select the polyline, I'll erase it and I'll select this polyline and I'll erase it. Now here we have it. So the objects are now moved to a new layer and they're also 
copied now if you don't want to do it in this way if you want to make a copy of that so you can do that also so once again i'll select this copy to layer option and i'll select both of these objects and press enter now select the destination layer and select the base point in this case i'll select this point as the base point and now i'll specify another point somewhere over here and here we have it so now the copy of these layers will be made at the point which we have specified and obviously these objects are on the new layer which we have assigned so you can use this tool to create new copies of the object on different layer so this was all about lay merge lay del and copy to layer tools of autocad In this video, I will tell you about some of the tools which are available on the layers panel for quick access. So when you go to the layers panel, you'll find that we have some tools here and you can use these tools to ease your task. And they are quite shortcuts which can be used directly without using the layer properties manager. So let's just start with the first tool, which is on and off. So using this layer off, you can select the layers which you want to turn off. So select that tool and click on any object of a particular layer and all of the objects of that layer will be turned off simply you can click on this text and all of the text objects are now off now press enter to exit this command in order to bring it back simply select turn all layers on or lay on tool here and all the layers will be brought back to the drawing if you want to isolate some of the layers selectively then you can select the second option so using this second tool you can select objects and all of the objects except your selection will be hidden so in this case i'll select this object and all of the objects of this layer and also let's select this dimension so all of the objects of layer 0 and the dimension will remain and rest of the objects will be hidden so let's press enter and here we have it so you only have the dimension and all the objects of layer 0 and rest of the objects are hidden so you can use these tools for accessing some of the layer properties quickly and efficiently now if you want to bring all the objects back in the drawing area simply click this icon the unisolate icon and here we have it similarly you can freeze layers selectively so select this freeze option Click on the object which you want to freeze and the layer has been frozen. You can select layer 0 also or any other layer to freeze them. Press enter and now to bring them back simply click on this thaw all layers option and they are brought back to the drawing area. Similarly we have this lock layer. Select this tool, click on the layer objects which you want to lock and you need to press enter again if you want to lock more layers. So here we have it. To bring them back, you need to selectively select the tool and then click on the objects. So I'll select this object and all of the objects of this layer are brought back. So I'll repeat this command and I'll click on this object and again it's also unlocked. So these were some quick access tools. We also have a different tool here which is make layer current. So using this tool you can make any of the layer current directly by selecting the object. For example, if you have a long list of layer, it becomes really difficult to find that layer in this layer drop down list. So let's say that we want to activate a particular layer simply by selecting the object from that layer. For that, we can select this option. So click on this, make current and click on any of the object. For example, in this case, I'll click on this dimension. And as soon as I do that, the dimension layer will become the current layer. You can select it again, click on any other layer, for example, text, and the text becomes current layer. Let's return back to layer zero as the current layer. Now let's have a look at this last tool, which is this match layer tool. So using this tool, you can match the properties of one object on the destination layer. For example, in this case, we have this plant text. Let's say that we want to apply the properties of this layer on this plant text for that select it now select the text press enter and now select the destination layer and here we have it the properties of this destination layer are applied here similarly you can do that for these arrows so i'll select this lay match option and i'll select all of these arrows so i'll select both of these arrows now press enter and select the destination layer and here we have it the properties of destination layer are applied here you can repeat this process for these objects also.
So once again, I'll select this lay match option, select all of these objects, press enter, and now apply it to this layer. And here we have it. So the properties of this layer are applied here. So not only the color, but also the line type, line weight, and all the other properties will also be applied on these layers. So this was all about some of the tools which are available on the layers panel. And these tools are really helpful in accessing the properties of layer properties manager without even opening that layer property manager or without even using the layer drop down menu. In this video, I will tell you about hide and isolate options of AutoCAD. So here we have the simple drawing. Now, let's say that we want to work on certain parts of the drawing and for that we need less crowded drawing. So in that case, you can hide some of these objects from your drawing area and you can work on the parts which you require and later on you can restore the visibility of those hidden parts. So obviously you can do that using layers but that's a selective process which involves turning on and off certain layers. But if you don't want to involve layers, you can directly use the hide and isolate options to turn visibility of certain objects on and off. So I'll explain it using this drawing. So in this case, let's say that we want to hide all of these dimensions and also some of the extra annotations which are present in this drawing. So for that, I'll select the dimension first and then right click and select this option, select similar. So that will select all of these dimensions. Now I'll click on this ground level text and right click, select the same option. It will select all the text and I'll also select these objects from our drawing area. Now these are the objects that I want to hide. Now in order to hide them, simply right click anywhere, select this isolate option and now select hide objects. Now the objects are hidden. Obviously the objects are not deleted. You can restore them back whenever required when the editing is done. So in this case, let's say that we want to add a new geometry here. So I'll go to the circle tool and I'll add a new circle here. Now we want to bring back all the objects. So for that, once again, right click anywhere, go to the isolate option and select this option and object isolation. And we have all the objects back in drawing area. Now, if you want to work on certain objects and you want to retain them instead of hiding them and you want to hide all of the other objects from your drawing area, you can do that as well. So in this case, let's say that we only want to work with this circle and with this line. Now, rest of the objects we don't want here. We want to hide them. So select the objects that you want to retain, then right click, go to isolate and select isolate objects. So that will help you in retaining those objects and rest of the objects will be hidden. Now let's erase the circle and now we'll bring back all the objects. So simply right click, select the isolate option and select end object isolation and all of these objects are back in the drawing area. Now you can do the same thing using the hide and isolate status bar option. So here we have this hide and isolate option. So you can click on this hide isolate option and select hide or isolate tool. But before using that, you need to make a selection. For example, let's say that we want to hide all of these dimensions. So I'll select the dimension, right click, and I'll select this option, select similar. That will select all the dimensions. Now go to this option, the isolate objects and select hide objects and they are now hidden. In order to bring it back, you can again go to the same status bar option and select this end object isolation. So click on it and the objects are back in the drawing area. So you can use any of these methods, either the right contextual menu or the status bar icon that depends completely on your preference. So this was all about the hide and isolate options of AutoCAD.